death is paid and you have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. Come on, help us out. Empty cross, empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. Last meeting face to face I am yours Jesus you are mine And it's joy Perfect peace Earthly pain Finally will cease Celebrate Jesus is alive He's alive And oh Happy day Happy day Wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. flee. It's got no power over me. Jesus, you are alive. You're alive forevermore. And you allow us the privilege to come together, to meet with you, to meet together as family, as friends, and especially as a part of your family. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being willing to come, to live, to die. You were buried. You rose from the dead. And you proved to all of the universe that you could make good on every promise. And you promised that to each one of us who would believe you, you would forgive us, you would save us, you would redeem us, and give us a place in your family. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. God is alive. And the darkness be, it's got no power over me. I have been set free. God is alive. And where is your seat? Sin has got no hold on me. I am free and deep. God is alive. We've been pretty. So rise and see. Everyone, glory of the risen sun. Holy one and overcome. Jesus is So 
Bible says because of his grace to us, because of his love. Good job, keep it up. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we go into your presence, we remember every blessing that we hold out to be from above. Living gratitude.
Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you that we can get together this morning and celebrate how you demonstrated your love for us, how you demonstrated that you are exactly who you said you are. God, the Son and the Son of God, thank you for proving that to us by rising from the dead after three days. Thank you, Lord, that you did it all for your love for us. God, help us not waste this life you've given us. Help us not just come to church and think that's, that that is all there is to it. God, help us change and mold our lives to live for you because you were willing to die and rise again for us. We love you. We praise you. It's in your precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are so glad you're here. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 says that we are darkened in our understanding. The Bible says that, well, I like you and I hope you like me. We, we give each other the benefit of the doubt. We say things like, you know, nobody's perfect. Uh, God's still working on me. I'm still a work in progress. You know, I'm a diamond in the rough. The Holy Spirit said to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, we are darkened in our understanding. We're separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in us. The Bible talks about the separation between God and man. Uh, the fact of our, our sin, the fact that we are not perfect because of the ignorance that is in us due to the hardening of our hearts. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says that we've all sinned and come short, right? We all sin and we fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that Jesus came to bridge the gap between us and him. The amount of space between two points, the interval that separates us from where we are, and where we want to be. Distance. There are countless ways to measure this separation. If you stacked one million atoms on top of one another, the distance would equal the width of a human hair. The average distance between the top of the human head to the bottom of one's feet. The width of the Grand Canyon. The distance across the United States. The Earth is 93 million miles from the Sun. We are 2.5 million light years away from the closest galaxy. Distance. We have constantly sought new ways to overcome separation. We practically and efficiently improve upon every effort. We attempt to reduce every distance into one that's more manageable and convenient. But there is one separation we cannot overcome, and it's not between continents or the expanse between stars and planets. It is the separation we have all been born into, the separation from our Creator, our Maker, our God. We cannot overcome on our own, not by knowledge, not by our good deeds, and not by our vast resources. But while we were powerless in our sin, Christ came. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ came to us in the form of a baby. He walked the earth as a man. He died a scandalous and inconvenient death on a brutal and bloody cross to once and for all destroy the separation between our heavenly father and his children. And he forever conquered the power of death when three days later, he rose from the grave and left his tomb behind. What was once unobtainable is now freely given to those who will receive. The chasm that once separated us from the king has been overcome, and victory is ours if we will receive it. Jesus came to bridge the gap between us and him. He became sin who knew no sin. That we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself, carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus was Rest. 
chapter 18 the Bible says that Jesus took the 12 uh, apart he took them uh, aside from everyone else and he told them everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of God about the Son of Man about me will be fulfilled and Jesus said to the disciples about himself he the Son of Man will be delivered up to the Gentiles they will mock him they will insult him they will spit on him they will flog him and they will kill him speaking of himself but he said on the third day, he will rise again. The Bible tells us that Jesus loved us enough to come, to live, to die for us. status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. He became human.
Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever, ever. So that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. loved us enough to come, to live, to die for us. He walked the dirty streets, famous for nothing. He said, come follow me, and they came. A face like all the rest, something was different. The Son of God would lead the way. But soon they all would say, There he goes, a hero, a savior to the world. Here he stands, scars in his hand. He spoke with clarity, walked across the sea. A single word would calm the storm. His touch could heal the sick, but he was called a hypocrite. Laid behind the stone, his death was shortly mourned. And he left the gun. Show them that no fear, he is not here, he is not here. There he goes, a hero, a savior to the world. Here he is dance, scores in his hand. We love, he came, he allows a Savior of the world, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. 
you pray with us? Lord Jesus, thank you again for your love for us. Thank you that you are willing to come to this earth as a humble baby. God, that you are willing to live this life being ridiculed, made fun of, tortured, and killed because of your love for us and because of your willingness to forgive us our sins if we would just come to you and humbly admit our sins, confess our sins, turn from our sins, and live for you. God, thank you once again that we can celebrate today among every day that you rose from the dead, that you pr proved to the entire world that you are indeed the Messiah, the Savior of the world for everyone who would accept. Lord Jesus, if there's anybody here who doesn't know you this morning, <coughs> God, help them see you. Help them hear from you. Help them recognize the truth of you. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible says that God made him who knew no sin. That's Jesus Christ. God the Father made his son, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus Christ took on every one of our sins. Everything you've ever done, everything we've ever done that we thought we got away with, everything that we would have done if we thought we could do it and get away with it. Jesus paid the price for every sin. The Bible says that Jesus became sin for us and Jesus became salvation for us. became sin for us. Jesus became salvation for all who would believe. Peter, do you believe me? And Peter with the rest said, Lord, I believe. To one man, Jesus asked to a dad, do you believe me? He said, Jesus, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Jesus, I believe you, but my, my faith is so weak. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I believe you. One of you will betray me. And Peter said, though all betray you, yet I will never leave you. And Jesus said, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me. And they came, and they arrested Jesus, and they started to mistreat Jesus. They took him away. They took him to be tried, condemned. All the disciples fled. Peter stayed close, not real close, but closer than the rest. But Peter knew this is, this is probably it. Uh, someone asked him, aren't you one of his followers? And he was too afraid, and he said, no. He said, no, I'm not. I'm not one of his followers. A little bit later, you are one of his followers. Your speech betrayeth thee. I can tell by the way you talk. You're a follower of Jesus Christ. He said, no, I'm not. And the rooster crowed. 
that Jesus was condemned, he was beaten, he was whipped, he was nailed to a Roman cross, he was executed, and he died. And Peter with the rest said, it's over. He's dead. The gates and doors are barred and all the windows fastened down. Spent the night in sleeplessness, I rose at every sound. Half in fear of the darkness, half in fear of the day. Would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and went down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night and none of us knows where. And the stone's been rolled away and now his body is in there. We both ran for the garden and John ran on ahead. We found the stone in the empty grave just the way that Mary said winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell well, something strange had happened there but what I did not know John believed a miracle I just turned to go circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high Cause I'd seen them crucify him And then I saw him die Back inside the house again The guilt and anguish came Everything I'd promised him just added to my shame Until at last it came to choices I denied I knew his name And even if he was alive It wouldn't be the same Suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide and I fell down on my knees and just clung to him and cried he raised me to my feet and as I looked into his eyes Love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet release And every fear I'd ever had just melted into Jesus is alive! Woo. He's alive! He's alive! He's alive and I'm forgiven Heaven's gates are open wide He's alive! He's alive! He's alive and I'm forgiven Heaven's
Jesus is alive. First Peter, the Bible says, he himself, Jesus himself, bore our sins on the tree. He bore our sins on his body, in his body, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Jesus didn't just die in the past. This is not just something to, to think about. It's not just something to celebrate. It's not just something to say thank you for. Jesus' death, his burial, his resurrection was the beginning of your brand new life. If you trust him, if you believe him, yeah, we do, I'm preaching to the choir, you're here, you're in church. But how many people in churches like this, although we trust him, we believe him, we love him, there's never been a time, there's never been, there's never been a specific place where you just gave your heart to Jesus. You just said, Jesus, I don't understand all that stuff. I don't think I wanna be crazy religious but I believe you died on the cross for me. Jesus, please come into my heart. Jesus, please forgive me. Jesus, please forgive me. Jesus, please forgive me. Jesus, please forgive me. Save me. Change me. When did you pray a prayer like that? When did you bow your heart before Jesus Christ? When did you, when did you not just close your eyes, but, but, but shut your life down right then to say, Jesus, I am nothing without you. Have you ever done that? I'm not asking if you've been baptized. I'm not asking if you're a good person. I'm not asking you if you've joined a church at some point in your life. I'm asking you if Jesus Christ visibly stood right before you and asked, what have you done with my sacrifice for you? What would we say? What could we say? I'm begging you, if you can't remember, if you cannot remember a time and a place in your life where you made that unconditional surrender to Jesus, you may love him, you may believe him, you may believe he's the son of God, you may believe he is God in the flesh. You may know, you believe he died on the cross for your sins, but there's never been a time you can't remember a time and a place in your life where you pray, Jesus, I give up. I'm not going to trust myself. I'm not going to trust my church. I'm not going to trust the Pope. I'm not going to trust a preacher. I'm not going to trust my goodness. I'm not going to trust in the fact that I've never done any of the big sins. Jesus, I trust you. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Bow your heads, close your eyes. Unless it's easier for you to listen to me with your eyes open looking at me, please just don't let anyone or anything distract you. If you can pray this prayer from your heart of hearts, uh, please do. If not, just, just don't. Nobody knows. It's just between you and God. But if you can pray this prayer, please do. Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe you. I believe that when you died on the cross, you died for me for my sins. Thank you. I am so sorry that my sins are responsible for your death. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me, for saving me. Jesus, please change me. God, you hear our cry. You hear the people praying. You, you hear our hearts. And Lord, I'm grateful for every single person who for the very first time said, Jesus, I'm giving it all to you. I'm trusting you and you alone. Thank you for promising that whoever would come before you and confess that they are a sinner and that you are God, you promise to forgive our sins, to forgive us, to redeem us, to save us. Jesus, we look to you now as the only way to righteousness. You bore our sins that you might become our goodness, our righteousness, our hope, our salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us that much. Thank you. Amen and amen and amen. God so loved the world. Jesus died for us. Can we live for him?
all scars tell a story. Some tell a story on the outside, some a story from the inside. Our individual scars tell the story of our lives. But there are scars that tell a very, very different story. God's only begotten Son placed humanity's sin upon himself. And he suffered its consequences. The consequences were death and separation from a holy, righteous, loving God. God made the ultimate sacrifice, his precious son. He died in our place to forgive our sin, to heal our wound. Three days later, Jesus took up his own life in a magnificent resurrected body, perfect in every way, except for one. His scars remained. The marks of the sacrifice made to return us to our Father endured and would never, ever fade. Because all scars tell a story. Ours are stories of pain and brokenness. But God's are a story of forgiveness and of healing and for all eternity. His scars will continue to tell the story of God's unending love for you and for me. He gave his life for us. He'd love for us to give our lives to him. Giving you my heart And all it is within I lay here on down For the sake of you, my King Giving you my dreams I'm laying down my rights I'm giving up my pride For the promise of new life and I surrender all to you, all to you. Could you sing this with me? And I surrender all to you, all Singing you this song, waiting at the cross, and all the world holds dear. I count it all and it's lost for the sake of knowing you, the glory of your name, to know the lasting joy, even sharing in your pain. And I surrender all to you, all to you. Pray this to the Lord. And I surrender all to you, all to you. And I. Down my rights, I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life. Sing it to the Lord, and I surrender all to you, all to you, and I. 
give our hearts to you we trust you we believe you and Jesus we know that there is so much more to this life than what we see and what we sense and what we want and what we get Jesus help us see that this life is all about you help us live it for you help us take the last few days of our lives and and make them a sacrifice Help us make our lives an offering to you. God, help us not waste another day with all the things we have to do. We love each other. We take care of each other. We work for each other. But Jesus, I pray that we would turn all the resources of our lives, our hearts, our energy, our dreams, our fears, our frustration. Jesus, help us turn everything over to you. I surrender. Jesus, I surrender. I'm giving it all up. Thank you, Jesus, that at just the right time, in the fullness of time, you were born of a virgin. You were born. You lived. You grew. You endured this life. You endured the sufferings of the cross. You took on all of our sin that we might be made righteous. Jesus, we give our hearts to you. We believe that if we give our lives to you, we will live forever and ever with you. You said that to those who would trust you, we would never die. And Lord, we believe you. We believe you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 11, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Are you saved? Did you give your life to Jesus a moment ago? Maybe some time ago, maybe in a church service, maybe at home, maybe driving down the freeway, maybe flat on your back in a hospital. At some point in your life, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Are you saved? If not, that's the first thing to do. The very first thing to do is to give your heart, give your life to Jesus Christ. Just give it up. Jesus, I give up. Jesus, thank you that that morning, thank you that that Easter morning at Southwest Church, at a little before 11 o'clock, I gave my life to you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for sealing all of my eternity. Thank you for making all of my eternity good, safe, and blessed because I placed it all in you. I hope that at some point you've prayed that prayer you saved. What's the next thing to do? Be obedient to him. He said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples. Give people a chance to be saved. And then he said, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If you've given your life to the Lord, but you still haven't followed the Lord in baptism, that's the next step. Jesus wants us to be saved, and then he wants us to be soaked. Follow him in baptism. You can get into heaven without being baptized, but you can't make God grin. You can't make God happy without being obedient to him. Have you been saved? Good. Then have you been baptized? That's next. Talk to me after the service. Uh, talk to one of us. Grab one of us and say, hey, what, who do I need to talk to? What do I need to do to follow the Lord in baptism? I, I'm ready to be obedient. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be soaked. And then he wants us to be serious about living for him. You know how you do that? You get into God's word. You find out what he wants you to do. And then you just do it. You just do it. Get into God's word, find out what he wants, and then just do it. The Bible says that to those of us who believe, to those of us who are saved, we'll probably die. If Jesus doesn't come and rapture us out, we'll probably die. 
They'll have a funeral service for you. You might get chamuscat, you might get stuffed, you might get buried. They might turn you into a diamond ring. They can do all kinds of things with the ashes nowadays. But the real person on the inside, your soul, your spirit, the part of you that'll live forever, will immediately go into the presence of God. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, you will immediately be separated from God. Please be sure, please be sure you've given your life to Jesus. <coughs> and he said in the last days that we will be raised up together with him. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul And I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead And I will rise when He calls my name No more sorrow, no more pain I will rise oh, light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus is overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won stand I will rise and I hear the voice of many angels sing. help me out worthy is the Lamb and I hear the cry of every longing on worthy is the Lamb sing it out Jesus, 
Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Happy Easter. Good to see you. He walked the dirty streets, famous for nothing. He said, come follow me, and they came. Face like all the rest, but something was different. The Son of God will live. 